Hi, Chris Youngren here with another sales thought of the day. In today's sales thought, we're going to discuss the presentation and the demonstration step when it comes to the road to the sale. Now, if you remember from our last video when we were talking about features and hot button features, we said that there was an acronym out there called SPACED. And SPACE stood for safety, performance, appearance, comfort and convenience. The E stands for economy and the D is dependability. And we said that your customer is interested in, in features that come broadly from these different areas. Now, also in that video, we discussed the importance of several NADA statistics to illustrate the crucial role that the demonstration and the presentation make when it comes to the sales process. And if you remember, we said 80% of the selling is done during the presentation and demonstration phase. And going with that, if we can do a good job there, 50% of the time, the guest said when they got a good presentation and demonstration, they bought on the spot. Now, we must have some work to do in the customer's eyes because in the same survey, they said 88% of the time, they got a lousy presentation and demonstration if they even got one at all. And then finally, the reason we were talking about the acronym SPACED is we said that NADA had stated 20% of the features is all the customer really cares about. Not every single thing you know. So we discussed how important it was to investigate like we did in some other videos and be able to figure out what those 20% hot buttons are that the customer really cares about. Today we're going to cover the three parts that make up the presentation and demonstration step itself. There's key ingredients that go in each one of those three parts. And then lastly, I'm going to do a one-sided role play for you on the objections you're going to get to taking a demonstration or maybe going through a presentation. Part number one. Make the car shine. Now, when I say make the car shine, I mean this literally, but really I'm talking about it in a figurative sense. I don't know if anybody's ever been to a jewelry store. I'm going to assume you have. And if you've ever looked at a piece of jewelry, especially gold or possibly silver, what will happen a lot of times is you'll show the, the, the clerk or the person what piece of jewelry you like. They'll pull it out of the jewelry box and they'll start shining it up with a polishing rag. Then they'll typically lay it out in like a circular fashion or they'll lay it out long ways on a nice little velvet, kind of a little velvet box that they've got that's either black or usually maroon. Now they'll typically make sure they put it underneath the best lights so when they're looking at it, it's kind of this, ah, this kind of like just shining moment, kind of like in Raiders of the Lost Ark whenever they lift up the Ark and it's just this shining whatever it is gold. That's, that's how we want the vehicle to look. Now, how do we pull this off? Well, a couple things. So the first element in there is make sure the vehicle's clean and ready to show. Now, I understand you've got lot people and detail departments that do this, but you can't ever leave this to chance. It's up to you to make sure this car's standing tall, smelling good, and looking right. So before you show that vehicle, make sure that you take a look and make sure it does look ready to show. The other part, the other ingredient in this part of making the car shine is move the car. Typically, you've got your vehicles and the inventory next to another vehicle. Sometimes they're super duper tight. We want to get it away from those other vehicles. We want to pull it out. We want to get it to a distraction-free spot. We want more room so we can do a good walk around. And also, we want to keep it away from other cars and people. So the focus whenever your guest is looking at this car is only on this particular car. The third ingredient to making that car shine is open it up. Open up all the doors on that vehicle. I've got a friend in the, that's a trainer in the automotive business. He says, butterfly, explode that vehicle. He means open up all four doors if they have four doors. The trunk, bed if, if it's got a truck, the tailgate. You want the hood, you want the sunroof to be popped, you want the convertible top to be down, you want that vehicle put up on that pedestal, you want it on that proverbial velvet board showing to the customer so it's standing tall and it's, it's standing out, it, it shines. You want the vehicle to shine. Part number two to a world-class presentation and demonstration during this step is a six position walk around presentation. Now, six positions, what are the six positions? Well, let's review those very quickly. The first position is the very front of the car. So you're going to be right in the front of the car, the bumper area. Maybe discuss the warranty at that point or the, uh, the crash ratings, safety ratings, talk about the bumper. 
The second position is standing where you're at, but you're going to pop the hood and discuss some of the items underneath the hood. Then you're going to move over to the passenger side window. You're going to discuss some features and, and advantages on that particular spot. Then you're going to go around towards the trunk. And then lastly, you're going to end up inside that vehicle. You're going to be on the driver's side, and then you're going to have all the rest of the guests inside that vehicle. Now, some other parts to this step that are very, very important, and that is the things that we're going to discuss, the features we're going to discuss, are only going to be from those 20% hot button features that we found out when we were talking with the customer. So for instance, we found out maybe that they're interested in safety. So most of the features and benefits we're going to discuss are going to be related to safety. Also, we want to use something called glamour words. What are glamour words? Glamour words are just fancier words. Instead of saying power seats, we're going to say the seven way power adjustable heated seats with lumbar support. Instead of saying leather, we're going to say Corinthian leather. So we're going to just jazz it up a little bit. By the way, you can look at your, your sticker, your MSRP sticker. A lot of times that's got the, the proper long glamour word right on there. Now, the other thing that we want when we discussed about that six positions, why six positions or why do we want to follow a six position routine? Well, two big reasons. One, it's a routine. And when we have a routine, it just keeps things more organized in our mind. Many times we're going to be doing these walk arounds at a parking lot of where the person works, perhaps maybe their home, different spots on your lot. You may be doing it inside a delivery area, maybe inside the showroom. So it's nice to have this routine because it keeps you centered. Also, if you follow this six position walk around properly, you'll end up in the driver's side and the, the rest of the guests will end up inside the vehicle. And it makes it much easier when you're going to go on the demonstration part of the presentation and demonstration step. Speaking of feature advantage and benefits, let's review what it is and let's go through a few examples in the automotive business. So the feature is just what it is. The feature, what the feature is. The advantage is what the feature does for you, and the benefit is why you care about having that feature, why you want it, what it's going to do for you. So let's use navigation as our feature. The guest expressed to us that this is very important to have on their next vehicle. We would, uh, when we're showing this particular feature, here's how we would do it. Jane, this is the navigation system with the 8-inch touchscreen control, and it's got the backup camera as well. Now, what it does is it gives you step-by-step -step voice instructions and map directions while you're driving the car. Now, why you care about that is you don't have to take your eyes off the road, and that's going to make sure you arrive wherever you're going safely and on the quickest route possible. The third part to a world-class presentation and demonstration is to actually do it. Don't skip this part. 99% of the customers surveyed by NADA said that they wanted to drive the vehicle before they moved forward and purchased it. Yet this crucial step a lot of times gets missed, and I think the reason for it really is reflex objections from your guest. They a lot of times are going to hit you with the reflex objection of, hey, I don't have time, or I just drove one down the street at Younggren Motors, and I don't need to take another demonstration drive. Now, the easiest way to overcome these reflex objections is to follow what we discussed in the last step, which was the six point walk around and making sure you end up inside the vehicle on the driver's side and then all the guests are inside that vehicle. Because now you can just put the vehicle in gear and be like Nike and just do it. You can just go on the demonstration drive. And you don't need to feel like you're taking these people hostage. I mean, after all, 99% of the people when surveyed said they wanted to drive before they move forward. You're just helping them really move forward in the sale. Let's take a moment to discuss these two reflex objections, and why don't I give you a one-sided role play on how you could handle each of these objections. Well, let's take them one by one. The first one we talked about was the, I don't have any time. I ran out of time. I'm on a time constraint. Got to go. Can't take a demo drive. Now, first of all, this is a common reflex objection, not just to the car business, to, to a lot of businesses. In fact, I think that happens a lot of times in social situations. Say that we've got a wedding reception that we've kind of been 
drug you to and we don't really want to go. A lot of times when we do go, we'll say something to the wedding party like, hey, you know what, we, we don't have a lot of time to stay. We just want to drop by and make sure we gave you the gift and congratulate you guys on the on the wedding. And then we end up finding out there's a lot of friends that we know there and it's a good time. So we end up hanging out. It's kind of our escape clause. Well, when it comes to the guest at the car dealership, we know they want to drive it. 99% of the people surveyed said they want to drive it before they move forward and purchase it. So we really need to overcome this objection. How to do it? It's real easy. I learned these two objection handling techniques from the Joe Verde group, and I'll just share them here with you. Chris, sorry, we just don't have time. Maybe we can come back in a day or so and take a demonstration drive. Can we just get the best price? Hey, you know what? For sure, we can get you the prices. You know what? Speaking of demo drives, though, if you're short on time, we'll just go ahead and take the short route. Hop on in. It only takes a few minutes. And then just be like Nike. Jump in and do it. Now, the second reflex objection to taking a demonstration drive is I just drove one down at ABC Motors or Chris Younger and Chevrolet. This one we need to overcome as well. And the reason for it is because we don't want to leave the presentation skills of another salesperson. We don't want to leave that as the way that we're going to try to build value in our vehicle. So we would just say something to this effect. They say, Chris, you know what? I don't need to take a demonstration drive. Could we just get the figures? I just drove one down the street at Younger and Ford. And I'd say, hey, you know what? If you just drove one and didn't go ahead and purchase it, that kind of concerns me because these things practically sell themselves. You know that salesperson you must have talked to? He must have not have told you everything about the vehicle. Let me show you a couple things. A couple things I think you're really going to love. It really won't take very long. We'll take the short route. Hop in. Come on, let's go. And then you move forward. You're just being persistent. You're not being pushy. And again, 99% of the people wanted to drive it before they purchased it and move forward. So we're just kind of saving them from their self. A few other key ingredients to have for a world-class demonstration drive would be to go. You go. So we just talked about you have to go and they need to go as well. However, a lot of times after you've overcome this we don't have time or we just drove one down the street. You're just happy they're going to take it on a demo drive. So a lot of times you skip that part and you'll go get their car appraised while they're driving the vehicle by themselves. And again, you don't want to let the car sell itself. I mean, they probably can, but you know the hot buttons this customer's interested in and you know the route to take on the demonstration drive. You want to be there to control the experience to make sure it's a positive experience. So make sure you find a way to go. Another key ingredient to a world-class demonstration ride is having a planned route. You want to have a route plan that encompasses all the types of driving terrain this guest may encounter when they purchase the vehicle. And that would be city driving, highway driving, smooth, nice, flat surfaces, some bumpy roads, maybe ones with some potholes. So that way they experience all the type of terrain that they may encounter. Now, going with that, you don't want the guest to have to turn across traffic. So let's try to cut out all the left turns and let's try mostly for right-handed turns. Now, I know in some cases that's not possible, but let's just be aware of that when we're planning our route. Another key ingredient is going to be the driving order. You want to go first, and if you follow the six-point walk around, you'll be in the driver's seat and they'll be sitting in the car, so it'll be easy for this, this part to happen. And then you want to, at a nice location, someplace on your planned route, you want to have a good stopping point, say halfway through. And you want actually the secondary driver, the person that's going to drive it, not all the time, but sometimes, have them drive second. And then lastly, stop at another spot and have the primary driver, the person that's getting the vehicle, the one that's going to drive it the most, have them drive last. Now finally, our last key ingredient to a winning demonstration drive is end near service. If you can, pull right into service. However, if, if you can't do that, still end near service. And what it does is it allows you a, a, a more of an organic way to walk through service and meet the service manager and some of service personnel after you're done with the demonstration drive. My final thought on creating a world-class presentation and demonstration is this. Remember, the real question is not what features your guest wants, it's why they want those features that really matters. If you can figure out the 20% hot buttons they're interested in, you'll be able to customize that presentation and demonstration around the why, around why they want those features. And then that's going to help connect the guest more emotionally to those features, which in turn will connect them emotionally to the vehicle itself, and you'll end up selling more cars. 
Well, if you heard something you like, do me a favor and hit that like button. Also, I'd love to hear comments, feedback, some things, some tips, some best practices that you use during the presentation and demonstration. So with all that, I'm going to say thank you and have a great day.